crazy is about to jump off the machine. I heard the words acid drop, but I don't know what any of this means. Well, <laughs> all right, three, two, one. I'm gonna take this 54 pound piece of 6061 aluminum and turn it into this. I'll give you $700 if you can hit a tray flip on that first try. Now, the aluminum board, we're starting out with a slab of aluminum that weighs over 50 pounds, so we need to figure out a way to make that board match the weight of this board almost exactly. So we're gonna take some inspiration from an aerospace component, and you can see kind of how this works here. We have all these triangular pockets, and they reduce the weight of the finished part while maintaining the structural strength. So the first thing that we had to do was measure out this board because I want to create as close of a copy to this as I can. It needs to weigh the same, look the same, work the same, and just be the same. So the first thing we did was take a bunch of measurements and then we translated those measurements into our CAD software SOLIDWORKS so that we can create a finished design of the board in 3D space. So again, take a look at the board design here. We have our concave surfaces on the top of the board, our transition surfaces, the concave on the ends of the board. We have nice fillets everywhere. Everything's nice and smooth. We got chamfers on the inside of the pockets. We have our trucks modeled in. That way we can make sure that our holes through the board actually match up to our trucks. It's time to take this over to our CAM software, write a program for our CNC mills, and get to making some chips. All right, so we brought our part into our CAM software and now we're ready to apply toolpath to it. The software is going to load all of our toolpath up and start applying that toolpath to our stock so we can watch our part take shape in simulation. All right, so the first thing we're doing is we're coming in with our three inch Stellram face mill and we're just taking 25 thousandths off the top surface. Now we have a perfectly cleaned up, beautiful flat surface. So we're gonna come in with our drill and we're gonna drill our four holes that we're gonna use for our bolt holes in the second operation. All right, so now that we have those four holes drilled, we're gonna use that same drill to come in and pre-drill all of our ISO grid pockets. So we have a ton of these holes and we're drilling pretty fast. It's 150 inches a minute. So it doesn't take long to drill all these holes in this operation. Up next, we have our quarter inch drill, and we're gonna drill a bunch of holes that are used for weight reduction, but also for the holes for our trucks, and then some holes around the outside shape of the part. Now, all these holes could be threaded if you wanted the versatility to be able to add your own plastic rails or bumpers to your board later. Now that we have all our holes in, it's time to come in with our three quarter core five end mill, and we're gonna rough the whole outside shape of the board. Now, this is gonna get us close to our near net shape of the board so that we can come in with our ball end mill and do all of our finishing of our bottom surface. So right now we're starting with our board upside down and we're gonna get all of this bottom roughed out and then finished. So you can see here the board's kind of taking shape. This is gonna be our concave surface on the bottom. Now that we have that, we're coming in with a one inch ball end mill that's gonna do all of the surfacing and clean everything up. So if we take a look, we're starting on the concave down at the bottom again, working our way up the board. Our little transition space. Now across the bottom of the board. Our second transition. And now we're gonna come up the convex on the other side of the board. So now you can see we have all the surfaces roughed in on the bottom side of our board. We're gonna just run those exact same tool paths again, but a little bit deeper with a little bit closer step over so that we get a perfectly smooth finish on the bottom side. Oh man, look at this thing. These surface finishes are beautiful. And now that we've finished our convex surfaces on the bottom of the board, it's time for us to come in and do our ISO grid pockets and our fillets. This thing's gonna look so good by the time I'm done with it, you're gonna think Jesse made it. Is that camera gonna clear the tool change arm? The one on the spindle? Okay, good. <laughs> Success. We have all these surfaces done. We have the whole outside profile done. It's time to come in with our end mill and start plunging into our pockets to make our ISO grid. 
See what's happening here. The tool's plunging straight into the hole that we pre-drilled, and then it's starting to cut the triangle right away. What this does is eliminate us having to ramp slowly down into the pocket and having our end mill gall up on us. Now the ISO grid is probably the most important part of this board as far as I'm concerned, because without it, this board would weigh almost 15 pounds and would be five times heavier than a wood board. But with the ISO grid, SolidWorks says that our board is gonna weigh exactly 3.4 pounds by the time we're done. So it's gonna weigh the same as the wood board does. Now you notice these two pockets that I cut here in the bottom of the board. And these are gonna be covered up by our trucks, but they're only for weight reduction, so they don't really serve a purpose other than that. Come in and do a couple finish passes on those so they look pretty. Now our next tool is our chamfer mill. And we're gonna use this to come in and put chamfers on all these pockets to keep the sharp edges away with, like we talked about earlier. And we're also gonna use this same tool for our engraving. All right, so now that all of our pockets are done, we're gonna come back in with the chamfer mill and just hit those pockets that we just added at the end. I talked about earlier how these towers were gonna to be important for our second operation because we're gonna be bolting through them but they're also at the same level as the bottom of our board in the center. So I need to make sure there's not a burr on these because if there is, it could end up lifting our board up off the table and then we'll get a lot of vibration in it when we go to do the second operation. So our next stop is to deburr those towers. All right, so now that our first operation is complete, you can see how beautiful all of these surfaces came out. Everything's deburred real nice. There's no sharp edges. Everything is perfectly safe to touch. And this thing's coming out really, really nice. The only difference is where a wood board would be flexible, this board's gonna be more rigid. So I'm not sure how it's gonna work out, but I know I'd love to see Chris, what the is his name? Chris Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Chris Jocelyn, Trey Flip El Toro. Now that our first operation is complete, we're ready to take our part out of our vise, take our vices off our table, clean everything perfectly, and then we're gonna bolt our part straight to our table. Now take a real close look at this board. This is craftsmanship that Jesse and Trevor will never be able to achieve. Now you see, Jesse might make cool things like a really shiny pit bull head out of aluminum or, you know, a nice American flag. You know, I'm all about patriotism, but I'm also about making things that are actually useful in day-to-day -day life, like, say, a multifunctional machinist hammer or an aluminum skateboard. Hmm. All right, so now you can kind of see the way the board's starting to take shape even more now. And our face mill came in here, cut all this material out of the middle. So now we come in with this ball end mill and we're gonna cut basically a groove right down the middle of the board. And this is so that we can come in with the same ball end mill and start working our way to the left up our concave. And then start in the center again and work all the way to the right up our concave. Time to come in and get our left transition. All right, during that roughing operation, you may notice that we used a much bigger step over, so our surface here doesn't look as pretty as it did on the bottom side. But that really doesn't matter because we're about to come in with a quarter inch chamfer mill and we're gonna put our grip tape on this board. Now on a normal wood board, a skater would put down some grip tape, and this is kind of a sandy paper that sticks to the board, and this keeps your feet stuck to the board, and this is super important when you're skating. So what we've done instead is we've come in and put a bunch of little teeth. If you zoom in, you can see here that these little sharp teeth are gonna be what keeps your foot attached to the skateboard. for all of our ISO grid pockets. Now we come in and we engrave our Titans Eagle logo.
All right, now we're back with our one inch ball end mill and we're gonna finish roughing out our concave. Now we come to our last operation. Now in the real world, this is where we stopped. Not only had the four bolts on the outside holding on, but we came in and we put four more bolts on the inside of the part here in the ISO grid. The reason for this is when this ball end mill finishes this final fillet, the part's gonna cut completely free from the remaining stock out here. If we didn't have those four bolts holding the skateboard in, this tool would absolutely destroy our skateboard. So we take a look what happens as the tool works into the fillet. Same thing on the other end of the part. And now our board is completely free and finished. All right, so here we have our completed skateboard. So to talk back through the process we used for the second operation, we came in and cleared out all the material that was here in the middle. Then we brought in our ball end mill and we roughed out our concave, all of our curvature, and that revealed all the triangles beneath the holes. After we had all of our curvature roughed out, then we came in with our engraving tool and we started to put our grip tape on all this whole surface. After we had that done, all that was left was the chamfer all of our pockets, put our fillets on, and voila. All right, let's get this thing out of the machine and get her assembled. So I've got our metal board here, and I've also got the original wood board. Let's weigh these things and see how close we got our metal board to the weight of our wood board. So for the metal board, we got 2,552 grams. For our wood board, we got 2,386 grams. So that means that our metal board is about a third of a pound heavier than our wood board, but that's only the weight of a cheeseburger. So I don't think that's gonna make such a big deal in the use of the board. So let's go find out how this thing works. The catch is if you don't hit it the first try, you have to do a chip angel. Oh, chip angel. All right, <laughs> All right let's do this. I see a chip angel in his future. Here's the problem with new trucks. <laughs> Should have tightened these up more. Skating time. I definitely had a heel drag. I don't know what they're talking about, but it, it looked good <laughs> to me. That was worth $700. I hope my wife don't see this video. Ah. So what do you think about the board, man? Grip tape and everything was good? Yeah, it feels just like a skateboard, just metal. There wasn't much, usually even like buying a wood board, you would get like a little wiggle room on like, does it feel like the last board you skated? But this one like feels 
pretty much like a skateboard once you get on it. So for the functionality, you know, a skateboarder is probably going to prefer this board because we have the grip tape and everything on it. Then we made a show board without the grip tape for a machinist. This is what we like to see, nice shiny metal. That's what happens when a true engineer reverse engineers something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfection. This guy. What do you think Barry had to do to get all them singles? So what did Barry have to stop doing to get all those singles? I hope you guys liked today's video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys again next time. Give me my money. Ow.